Good morning. My name is Joe Lacey. I'm from Austin, Texas. Um, in this era when the financial departments of the institutions of higher learning are referring to you as an anomaly and they preach the efficient markets hypothesis saying that you can't outperform the market, where does one go to find a mentor um, like you found in Ben Graham, someone you can ask questions to regarding value investing? My understanding is that the University of Florida has instituted a couple of courses that uh, actually Mason Hawkins gave them a significant amount of money uh, uh, to uh, finance, and I believe they're, uh, they're teaching something other than efficient markets uh, there. There's, there's a very good course at Columbia, I know, that uh, it gets a lot of visiting uh, teachers to come in. I, I, I go in there and teach occasionally, and, 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 uh, uh, but a number of practitioners do. So there, I think the efficient market uh, theory is less wholly writ now than it was 15 or 20 years ago in in uh, in universities, but it's it, it, it's there's a lot of it taught. But I think you can find more diversity in what is being offered now than than, than 10 or 20 years ago. And I'd recommend you know looking into those two schools. It, you know, it's really quite useful uh, if if you had a merchant shipping business. If if all of your competitors believe the world is flat, you know that is, it is a huge edge because they will not take any. Uh, they will not take on any 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 uh, cargo to uh, to go to places that are beyond where they think they will fall off, and so we should be encouraging the teaching of efficient market theories in, in, in universities. And uh, it, it amazes it, 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 it amazes me. But what it, you know, it, it, I think one time that uh, was it Keynes that, that said that uh, most economists are mo most economical about ideas that they make the ones they learned in graduate school last a lifetime. And what happens is that you spend years getting your PhD in finance and you, you learn theories with a lot of mathematics in them that the average layman can't, uh, can't do and, and you become sort of a high priest and you get an enormous amount of yourself and ego and even professional security uh, invested in those ideas and it gets very hard to back off after a, after a given point and I think that to some extent has contaminated uh, uh, the teaching of investing uh, uh, in the universities. Charlie? Well, I would argue that the contamination was massive. No. But it's waning. It, 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 yeah, it is waning. It's waning. It, it, the good ideas eventually triumph. Yeah. Anom the, the word anomaly I, I've always found interesting on that because, it, uh, you know, after a while, I mean, Columbus was an anomaly. But they, it, 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 what, it, what it means is something that the academicians could not explain, and, and uh, rather than re-examine their theories, they simply dis discarded any evidence of that sort as anomalous. And I think when you find information that contradicts previously cherished beliefs, that you've got a special obligation to look at it and look at it quickly. Uh, which I think Charlie told me that one of the things Darwin did. Uh, was that whenever he found anything that contradicted some previous belief, he, he knew that he had to write it down almost immediately because he felt that the human mind was conditioned, so conditioned to reject contradictory evidence that unless he got it down in black and white very quickly, his, his mind would, would, would simply push it out of existence. Charlie didn't, knows more about Darwin than I do. Maybe he can explain that. Well, I don't know about Darwin, but uh, I did find it amusing. One of these extreme efficient market theorists explained Warren for many, many years as uh, an anomaly of luck. And he got to six sigmas, six standard deviations of luck. And then people started laughing at him because six, six, six sigmas of luck is a lot. So he changed his theory. Now Warren has six or seven sigmas of skill. No. So you, so you yeah. see. I'd rather have the six sigmas uh, of luck, actually. <laughs> The one thing he couldn't bear to leave was his six sigmas. <laughs>